Kyle Halad, you're Makal Kabod, you have a Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, and greeting and salutation to the brothers teaching and preaching the truth and truth and in sincerity and to the hopeful elect, Shalom. Um, I really haven't came up with a title for this video. Uh, I just, through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, I just jumped into the video because uh, I was watching the video from. A, a brother well I was watching it on Apostle Aramblai page uh, I believe the video is called War on Our Manhood and um, also I was watching a video from Apostle Gabor um, I, it, it slipped my mind what the name of that video is yeah it was uh, I believe it says something about uh, GMS being the most hated um, it's, it's a new video but anyway getting straight to the point uh, this video pretty much through the spirit of your how about shimmy how shy is about persecution because in case if um, anyone is coming into the truth or in case if someone has you know forgotten how they look when they was last looking in the mirror um, in the truth, yeah, you get persecuted, bro. Persecuted. A whole lot. And because that, instead of holding up, let's go ahead and just jump into these scriptures. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And there's two words from this that caught my interest. But pretty much in case you just didn't understand. When when brothers suffer while they're in the truth, blessed are ye who suffer. That's why the scripture as well say, Blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Because two thirds is going to be offended in these scriptures, yet at the same time, one third is going to be refined as well, because you have to partake in the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. The one third we're going to get persecuted on all types of levels, but it's also as much as you can handle. And if you were not able to handle it, to be quite honest, it wouldn't even be served to you. So pretty much blessed if you suffer those things because uh, especially when you endear in the truth when you endear and it, it, I, I would even have mercy on say for instance if you have a weak hour yet you snap out of that weak hour I would still consider you you endearing because we're still flesh so if you endear or not, not say if since you endeared pretty much blesses you man rejoice because your reward is great in the heavens man I mean uh, what whatever you have about him you have a shot got in mind for you I do not know what that is so I'm not gonna be a false prophet and say it's this is that man I don't know what it is yet sin sincerely your reward is great yet the two words I wanted to go into the first word is revile I had to go into the strongs for that and if you know me by now, you would know me. I am not good at speaking Greek at all, bro. So I'm not even going to try to attempt. So I'd rather learn than lean on my own understanding and say that it, this is what the word said, man. As you've seen many other previous videos. So let's go ahead and hear what the crackers say. Strong's G, 3679, on Idezo. On Idezo. And uh, Strong's G thirty six seventy nine on Idezo on Idezo Strong's G thirty six seventy nine on Idezo yeah. on Idezo. That's cool.
I'm gonna try something real quick. Uh huh. Okay. Huh. Well, I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna continue on, even though I cannot hear it. I'm gonna try my best to pronounce it, man. So forgive me if I fuck up, and forgive me if uh, maybe I just don't hear it on my end. Uh, I'm gonna try my best. Uh, on a deso, on a deso. I don't know if I said that right. Yeah, moving on. The word revile. That's the Greek word way of saying revile is on a deso. Yet, the King James translates strong G three six seventy nine, because that's what it's called. The lexicon strong G thirty six seventy nine. And it says in the following manner it says upbraid reproach revile cast in one's teeth suffer reproach to reproach upbraid revile of deserved reproach of undeserved reproach to revile to upbraid cast favors received in one's teeth uh, moving on to the strong definition it says to defame i.e. rail at chide taunt Cast in teeth, suffer, reproach, revile, upbraid. And excuse me for my language, you're still having a hard time understanding what what they're saying when people talk shit. Okay? When people talk shit. That's what revile means. That's what uh as well defame means. That's what rail at means. That's what taunt means. Uh, have you if you ever played the video game back in the day, Mortal Kombat? One of the I mean, yeah, the fatalities are cool, but me, uh, I mean, this might sound lame, but I'm gonna be truthful. One of the things I really liked about Mortal Kombat is the taunt, not just like say for you uppercut somebody and then do come out of nowhere, toasty. Not just that, but the shit Shao Kahn would say to a person, talking smack. So, yeah, they, blessed you when people revile you. The next word I wanted to go into was persecute. Oh, no. Strong's G, Dioko. 1377. Dioko. Dioko. Um, the Strong's, is it Strong's G, 1377? Um, it says, the root word etymology is a prolonged and causative form of a primary verb dio to flee uh, cf the base of then it got some great stuff right there so i'm not going to go into that moving on it says persecute follow after follow suffer persecution miscellaneous so like you to make to run or flee put to flight drive away to run to, lock you, to run swiftly in order to catch a personal thing to run after to press on figuratively of one who in a race runs swiftly to reach the goal I believe you probably get the point but no nah, check this out to pursue in a hostile manner this is a point that, that yeah persecute in any way whatsoever to harass trouble molest one to persecute to be mistreated suffer persecution on account of something without the idea idea of hostility to run after follow after someone metaphor to pursue to seek after eagerly earnestly endeavor to acquire uh, let me see if there's any more I believe that's pretty much it that covers that but yeah harass yeah 
I don't know if, if any of you brothers suffer this. Yeah, man, sometimes, man, life seems like a comic book. Like, you got arch nemesis, man. You got straight up arch nemesis out here. Like, not only do you, you, you suffer persecution, and say, for instance, you see a scoffer who was out there while prophesying, you might see them in day-to-day -day life. And this motherfucker would just start bugging. Yeah, excuse me for my language, but I'm just being... I'm being lively, goddammit. This motherfucker would start bugging the fuck out, man. Losing their goddamn mind. And I'm just like, man, I ain't said shit. I ain't did shit. And the only thing I could think of, motherfucker, yeah, you probably feel some type of way. Because the last time you probably asked a question, it wasn't what you heard. And now you fucked up because the scriptures done ripped your imagination to shred. Yet, the point is... You got some of those individuals that's like that, and yes, they persecute you. Now, every time they see you, they like, whenever your house child walking into the town, and those demons like, did you come to harass us? Did you come to trouble us before the time? That's them. I mean, like, damn. And just to reiterate it in a different way, because, man, it, I, I like how the scriptures do that, and um, where it talks about I have come not to bring peace upon the earth, but a sword. And then another interpretation it says, I have come not to bring peace upon the earth, but division. So I, I, I like this portion as well. It's pretty much the same scripture. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 22. It said, Blessed, blessed are ye when men, men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you. And cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophet. And just like scripture said, the spirit of the prophet is the subject unto the prophet. So, just giving you understanding. You suffer in that in this life. You also more than likely suffer that. In the past life and more than likely that's the reason why you can handle it as well even though it just seemed crazy and a miracle to go through the things and probably meaningless to two-thirds and heathen yeah it's really a miracle to suffer those things because honestly the things that our brothers go through whether we prophesying on the highways and byways or just a day-to-day -day life or at work or shit with your women or with your family whatever the shit brothers go through honestly man the average motherfucker would have done it bought themselves whatever little gun they think is pretty and then blew their brains out because nah man you gotta really be a man to maintain yourself especially in the spirit of your how about shim your house shot you have to really be a man have to really be a man because you gotta remember that effeminate shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, uh, with that being said, next scripture jumping into is uh, this is First Peter chapter. It's gonna be long. I'm sorry, I had to do it. First Peter chapter four, verse twelve. It says, "Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you." But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Masiachim's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, Paul, when I said Masiachim, right there, it got Christ. And uh, I don't like saying that word, so that's the reason why I said Masiachim. I'm not, not going to really stress with the ach. Cause it's a C H in there. Uh, it's M A S A, no M A S H A C H. Uh, and I believe Y A M. I believe that's how you say, Mashiachim. So, pretty much saying crisis. I just don't like saying it. Where is uh, um, moving on. This is verse fourteen. It says, if ye be reproached for the name of Mashiach. Happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of Yahweh rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Now when I said Yahweh, in their interpretation, 
for the ignorant they they understand it as God so that's what I'm saying but the whole point is you're gonna go through some things and for the week it's gonna make them bug out or it's gonna make them yeah really just lift up their skirts and when you when they lift up pretty much it, it, it can't be a man if it has to lift up a skirt that's what I'm just saying so you just got maintain it's pretty much it's a war on masculinity even though some people won't even look at it in that way in that light but you gotta think about it these are words coming out of a man's mouth words the words of the heavenly father and his son that's the reason why they hate you for saying that and even though they can utter whatever harassment or whatever they can say to try to evil speak of the truth or of you but the main reason why they're doing it is because you're in the truth you might not think it's like that but I'll tell you like this if you go ahead and be foolish and fall out just so they can stop persecuting you let me put it to you like this whatever your life was before that's still going to take place whatever your life was in the truth that's still going to take place but imagine it just getting worse after that you thought the persecution was bad then it's probably more than likely going to be worse after that motherfuckers aren't going to respect you because you were in the truth but now you're no longer in the truth so what you doing now are you in the world or are what you doing now are you in Islam? Why are you in Islam? It's it, it just, you got, it, it goes back to the scripture when Yahweh Shah said, people going to uh, ridicule him because he started to build and didn't, com didn't complete it. So, that's, that's pretty much it, man. You got to remain tough, even though you suffer, what you suffer through all these persecutions, because they're going to say what they're going to say to try to test you. Yeah, it's, it's just part of that trial that you're going through is to refine you. Sometimes you will mess up and be cornered. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes your Hashem, your Hashem will even give you a break before confronting a certain person so that you won't do something corner. Okay, so it all depends. I I cannot just just say what your Hashem, your Hashem had in store for you because just like going back to uh this scripture right here rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy for behold your reward is great in heaven your reward is great in heaven so since none of us is hopping up in the chariot to see what's in the heaven to see what's in store for us it's not for me to say what your reward is so the only thing I could just tell you is just endure through those persecutions that's it that's it about that but it was something else wait a minute hold up cause oh yeah yeah and, and another thing with persecution that's good because this persecution is taking place cause I got something to say about uh, this this is uh first Peter I believe chapter yeah first Peter chapter 4 verse 17 just skipping down um, no actually yeah it said yeah first Peter chapter 4 verse 17 it said but it's going down to the 19th verse it says for the time is come the judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh and if it first begin at us what shall the end of what shall the end be slot you man let me start over first Peter chapter 4 verse 17 for the time is come the judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear Wherefore, let them to suffer according to the will of Yahweh commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And the point is I had to bring about that. Because also, yeah, even though these persecutions are taking place, 
Also, yeah, that's yeah, the fiery trial to re try you. Yeah, man. Consider yeah, rejoicing that and blessing you for that because at least it's better to be refined and to be tried so that you should know that you are being dealt with as a son than to be treated as a bastard. That's one point. But also It, it, it's good that you go through that because it, it, it's best if I just go ahead and jump into it because this word right here in the 19th verse of First Peter chapter 4 the word well doing is check this out oh man oh boy we gonna have problems uh check this out I'm gonna try with the best of my ability I'm gonna let this, cause maybe it might Strong's be G sixteen. Here because I get thought poia. Right now, but I, I get thought poia. Here with blue letters saying a blue letter party ain't saying nothing. But uh, I got the I got the pay I got the pile. I I don't know. I got the pile. E I I got the pile. I got the pair. I don't know. But it's well doing. Well doing is a course of right action. Well doing virtue. And check this out. This is cool as fuck. Virtue. Definition of virtue. A conformity, because remember this, it said, um, a course of action, a course of right action, well doing, virtue. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't even. I did not even know virtue mean meant until I looked up the definition. And it's, to me, it's cool as fuck. The de definition of virtue: a conformity to a standard of right morality, a particular moral excellence. You're gonna see what what makes it cool as fuck. Watch this. Uh, a particular moral excellence. A benefit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start saying a lane till we get to make what makes it cool as fuck. A beneficiary quality or power of a thing, a manly strength or carriage, valor, a commendable quality or trait, merit, a capacity to act, potency, chastity, especially in a woman. Virtues plural, an order of angels. Uh, let's see what else. I'm not even going to tap into. Yeah, matter of fact, the origin and etymology of virtue. Middle English, virtue, virtue, from Anglo French, from Latin. God damn. Uh, virtut, virtus, strength, manliness, virtue, from vir, man. More at viril, a viral. Uh, virtue uh, morally good behavior or character a good and moral quality the good res the good result uh, the good result that comes from something pretty much go through the same thing again and that's pretty much it on virtue but pretty much virtue is manly strength or carriage valor and as well, just like the etymology point out, manliness, man. So the persecution that you're suffering is making you a man. So consider yourself blessed to go through these trials uh, of being persecuted because that a sign of a man. In case if your brothers don't even know that. So, or if you coming into the truth and you didn't know that that is the sign of a man the sign of a man is that you getting persecuted for being in the truth that is the sign of a man to me I would say being a man because you're doing nothing more than trying your best to be the best servant you can to your Shem, your house shy and because other people are just so damn wicked and so caught up in their wickedness and don't like that you strive for righteousness Cause one thing they fail to understand is this man if if 
you pursue to do wickedness and you do not succeed you might get a little jewels and all this stuff but you're not successful it's not working out for you that's an indicator more than likely you need to stop doing wickedness repent and strive for righteousness now if you strive to do righteousness and you do not succeed for some reason you notice that you're doing wickedness and you're succeeding and you you're excelling at it but as far as righteousness man what the fuck is this it's like uh manna what is this seriously it's, it's like Cain some vain thing that you just offer up when you do something righteous if that's your attitude toward life the more than likely you probably are wicked because you do not prosper doing righteousness but you prosper doing wickedness so therefore more than likely you might be just wicked but if you prosper I'm not talking about prosper as in making millions I'm talking about if things work out for you and life makes sense after that you know that goddamn this is the reason why this shit is like that because I did this goddamn you know what I'm just continue to do this right here because this is working out and you know even though I fucked up right here but it's correcting itself more than likely you, you you're righteous but if you pursuing wickedness and it's you know that's what you excelling at then that's what it is that's the way I look at it because just like the scripture said the uh the clean shall continue to be clean, the righteous shall continue in his righteousness, the wicked shall continue to be wicked, and the unclean shall continue to be unclean. And let me see if I can find that first. Now, this mother is loading up. Man, damn, I ain't even mean to make a long video like that, man. I've been sloppy about that. I guess since Blue Letter want to chase all day to, uh, load up i'll take that as a sign that boom i just need to stop um so with that i hope that you were edified and i want to say kyle halati makakabad how are you how was shy double honor to the apostle and elders of gms and greeting and salutation to the brothers teaching and preaching the truth and truth and in sincerity and to the hopeful elect shalom Oh, yeah. Stay strong. Remember to carry yourself as men. Because if you take a look out here and take a look at the, I would say, majority of the world, honestly, it's only a few of us. Not too many men. So, don't beat yourself up too much. And hopefully these uh, scriptures can increase your faith and bring you to the light. Shout out to one.